Welcome to the English Pronunciation Clinic. This week, week three, we will be investigating how to reduce the English language. This is the second video for the week, Making It Easy. This multimedia presentation was produced by Charles Copeland, Walden University student number A00518354, as partial completion for the course EDUC 8347, Designing Instruction for E-Learning, taught by Dr. Darcy Harland. Making it easy. Making it easy, what does that mean? Well, first of all, native speakers are lazy with their language. Well, what I mean by that is if something is hard to say, they don't say it. In Korean, han and la is hard to say. Han la. So the n disappears to make it sound like hala. This is actually a form of assimilation. English also has many of these. It adds sounds. It deletes sounds. It, it, it's called adjustments to speech. And basically, it is reducing the language to make it easier to say. Adjustments to speech. Well, basically, like I said, we reduce things to make it easier to say. This includes function words like we had in the last PowerPoint, but there are also other things that we do to make it easier to say words. Um, the last PowerPoint had the function words. There are also some difficult combinations, which is what this PowerPoint is about. Linking, assimilation, deletion, and epenthesis. Linking is first. Linking is adding a sound to link two difficult sounds together. So there are four forms of this. Number one, between a tense vowel or a diphthong and another vowel. So B is very tense. Able is another vowel. So a Y is added and it'll sound like be able. You can hear a little bit of a Y between the words instead of a space. Blue is a very tense vowel, the oo sound, and ink, it's hard to get from one to the other without a long pause or without a linking sound in the middle. So it sounds like blue wink, blue ink. There is a little bit of a W in between the two instead of a space. The second and third form of linking are on this slide. Words end with a single consonant and start with a vowel. And between the two, at interval vocaic, between the syllables, there will actually be kind of a jump between the last consonant and the beginning of the next, making it sound like a double, double consonant instead of a space. So dog and ear often sounds like dog ear. Also, words that end with a consonant cl cluster, and the next starts with a vowel. So a consonant cluster is more than one um, consonant together. The last consonant jumps to the next word. An example of this is left arm. The T from left tends to jump over to the other word to make it sound like left arm, left arm, instead of a longer pause. And the fourth form of linking is when a word ends with the same consonant as the next word. Oh, you only say the consonant once and the space disappears. An example of this is stop pushing. It sounds more like stop pushing. The second P and the space between words disappears. So, and it becomes much easier to say the word. Stop pushing. Next, we get into assimilation. There are three forms of assimilation. First is progressive assimilation. And a progressive assimilation is just when the first sound changes the second sound to some degree. The, some examples of this are actually the S ending for like plural words or um, third person singular verbs and or the D or ED ending. When the voicing is different, it's hard to change this without stress, where these are just holding grammatical function. So bag, g, has a voice sound, s doesn't. It's hard to say, so it sounds like bags.
So G makes the throat vibrate. If you put your finger on your throat, you'll feel G, G. And S does not, where Z does. So another example is run plus S equals runs. Going with no vibration, fish sh has no vibration, but D does. So it sounds like fished because T has no vibration. If you hold your hand on the, um, your throat and say the sounds, you'll feel the vibration that I'm talking about. The next kind of assimilation is instead of going forward, now we're talking about a regressive assimilation. The second sound colors the first, often voice to not voice, just like before. For instance, if you have two function words, have and to, the T is not voiced, the V is. But in this case, it is a regressive assimilation. So the V changes to F, so have to, because F and V are formed the same way. The only difference is the vibration in the throat. The lack of stress is what causes this change. Have to. Have to. Because you want to take the stress out of these words. The third kind of assimilation is coalescent assimilation. Basically, what you're doing is you're adding the two sounds together. So as you can see, sound A and sound B mix together, and what it does is it makes a new sound, sound C in this case. This usually happens with S, Z, T, or D, followed by the Y sound. So when you have these, you're going to have some change because it's hard to say these sounds followed by y. So s and y often ends up sounding like sh. So if you say this year, it would sound this year. That's an sh. Z and y, zh does your. T and zh y equals ch. That your. T S T and Y Ch Lech Lechior D and Y J would J D Z and Y J like need your So as you can see all of these you're getting a change because the Y follows T S D or Z and this is where you end up with some sounds that might be harder for you to understand. Where did you get J when you have T, S, and Y? This is the reason why. It's called coalescent assimilation. Next is deletion. Deletion is like when the T disappears. NT happens between two vowels. So winter you don't actually say the winter. A lot of times when you're talking about a winter storm, the T almost disappears. You can also delete the T or the D when it is in a cluster of consonants, um, even across word breaks or in the middle of words. So kindness, it's hard to say n -d -n, so it ends up sounding like kindness. Don't know is another one that is very popular. Don't know is very hard to say, and it often comes out as to know. The final form of a change is called epenthesis. It's adding a sound this time instead of deleting it to make something easier to say. The S and ED endings are often just S or Z or D or T at the end of a sound. However, it is hard to say S, Z, Sh, and Z, followed by a S or a Z sound. So it is added to make it easier. So now when you've got fish followed by S, you can't say fish. It's hard. So what we do is we add the I. I has a throat sound, so it becomes is. Fishes. It's also hard to say D or T followed by a T or a D sound. So the I sound is added once again to make it easier. Here's an example of some of the changes in words and how they actually can affect meaning. Does he and does she. 
does and he would be does he does he does she z is hard to say z sh is also hard to say and the does he z is strong h is not and z and sh are both strong so in the first one the z stays and it makes does he and the second one the sh stays and it becomes does she so now you've got the difference between does he and does she turn into does he and does she in a word. So does she like to eat watermelon? Does he like to eat apples? This concludes the multimedia study guide created for English Pronunciation Clinic. You can download the PowerPoint and transcript for this study gu video guide video. Please go on to this week's quiz. All images in this PowerPoint were found using insert online picture functions with the Creative Commons image search option, which is a feature of Microsoft PowerPoint 2013. English information is from Teaching Pronunciation, a reference for teachers of English to speakers of other languages by Celsia Mercia et al. 1996.